Okay, I'm just going to introduce the next speaker. Um, so our next speaker is Amy Dolan. Her talk today is titled Preliminary Results from a Survey of Western Painted Turtles in Marshall County, South Dakota, Suggests Trapping Method Bias and a Skewed Sex Ratio. Amy uh, received her undergraduate degree in biology and Spanish from University of Oregon and her PhD from Portland State University where she studied genetic and reproductive biology of Eastern Kingbirds. She's currently an assistant professor of biology at Northern State University. Amy, are you ready? Yes, I am. Let me get my uh, screen shared here. Okay. All right, can you see my screen and hear me? Yep, all is well. Excellent. Uh, so thank you for that introduction. Again, my name is Amy Dolan. Um, I'm a relatively new assistant professor of biology at Northern State University, and I'm actually a brand new member of the Wildlife Society. So um, this has been a really fun conference and I'm really excited to share our preliminary results um, from a survey of painted turtles we've been doing in Marshall County. Um, so this is a collaborative project between myself, Dr. Heather Way, who is at University of Minnesota Morris, and our undergraduate scientist, uh, Tarina Barnes. Um, so the study really came out of the idea that although painted turtles have been well characterized in other parts of their range, really in South Dakota, um, the demographic data has pretty much relied on um, voucher specimens and bycatch data. So we're hoping to look at more kind of in vivo, uh, in vivo situations to kind of represent the true population dynamics. All right, so our study site uh, was uh, on an inlet pond in Clear Lake, which is in Marshall County. So that's in the far northeast corner of the state. Um, for any of you who are familiar with that area, it's off Highway 10, um, pretty much equidistant between Britain and Sisseton. Um, I, we picked this spot actually because my in-laws have a summer cottage on this lake. Um, so I spent a lot of time canoeing with my kids up in this inlet pond and always saw a lot of turtles. So we knew it had a pretty, uh, you know, we had a pretty good chance of catching some there. Um, I do want to point out a couple things in this picture on the right. So this inlet pond was relatively, you know, the riparian zone is relatively un- developed. So you can see a pretty complex uh, riparian zone. There's grasses and bushes and trees. Um, but the lake surrounding it has a lot of summer summer cabins on it. So I don't know, I looked at the Google, Google Maps and over 100. So the lake is really different from this inlet pond here. Um, so the other thing I want you to see in this picture is kind of hard on Zoom probably is that there are actually a lot of, oops, excuse me, a lot of natural um, basking spots in this inlet pond. So there were already a lot of spots that turtles could bask. And I think that's important to the interpretation of some of our results um, later on in the talk. So the study design, again, this is, this is pilot data. We hope this to be a real long-term study. Um, it's a really easy way to involve undergraduates in research. Um, so this is kind of pilot data. We set up a pretty standard mark recapture study. Um, we use three different trapping methods. So we set two basking traps, two hoop traps that had one and a half inch mesh. So small enough, I think uh, at least anything bigger than you know a hatchling probably can't escape from those hoop nets. And then we attempted to dip net as well. Um, I do want to say we didn't have a very um, dedicated route or something. We took dip netting. We just had our dip nets with us and captured turtles you know, with dip nets if we saw them, if we happened upon them. So we had these traps out for 24 days from June 15th uh, to July 9th. Um, we checked traps daily um, and we did bait both types of traps with the smelliest sardines that we could find. All right, so upon capture, we photographed each turtle. Um, we determined the sex. We weighed them using a spring scale and then, you know, took standard morphological measurements using digital calipers. So uh, straight carapace length, the body width at the widest point, body depth at the deepest point. Um, we also marked turtles with paint pens. So we used a unique uh, color and number combination. 
um, I do want to say we recaptured turtles, uh, you know, weeks later in some cases, and the paint pens seemed to hold up really well for the season. So they weren't uh, really chipping off or, um, you know, less intense. So I, I did have people in the lake call me and tell me that they saw since they knew, um, you know, knew I was doing this. They'd call and tell me, oh, we saw turtle 32 off the end of the dock. So that was kind of fun, too. Um, in addition to this, uh, so this is part of some of the ongoing work that I'm not reporting on now, but we took a small blood sample. We used part of that to make some hematological slides and then um, use the rest of that, put it into a DNA buffer that we're using for DNA analysis. Um, so generally, our general results, we captured 54 turtles um, that included uh, eight recaptures. So, our basking traps were very sturdy and managed to stay, you know, the two basking traps that I set stayed out the entire time. So you see that reflected in the trap hours. We caught 26 turtles with 1,151 trap hours. The hoop traps weren't quite as durable. So um, we caught 25 turtles in them. So nearly the same number as the basking traps, but uh, something kept kind of chewing them up. And so I had to remove them and, uh, fix them and put them back out. I'm guessing the culprit at the very end of the season, we caught this, um, we got this really big snapping turtle in one of the hoop nets. I was surprised it even fit in there to be honest, but I, I kind of wonder if that wasn't the culprit. Um, so we did repair those as we could, but eventually had to pull one of those. So you can see that uh, reflected in the fact that we only have 648 trap hours for the hoop net trap. Um, so in the dip nets, we managed to catch three turtles. So as far as the recaptures, the basking traps, we recaptured five turtles and the hoop traps, we recaptured three. Um, I don't really uh, report on the, the dip netting after this because um, it was such a minor part of the study um, or uh, the total captures. So. As far as our total recaptures, we recaptured eight individuals, and that included uh, four females and three males, um, plus one male that we actually recaptured twice. Um, although there have been published accounts where um, turtles are, painted turtles are more likely to be recaptured in the same trap type, we really didn't uh, see that. Granted, it's a very small sample size, so uh, three were recaptured in the same trap type, five were recaptured in different trap types. So I don't think we can really um, draw any conclusions with this small of a sample, but there wasn't an obvious pattern. So our catch per unit effort, we're reporting this in uh, individual trap per hour. Um, overall, we managed to catch uh, 0.02 um, uh, turtles per trap hour in our basking traps and nearly double that in our hoop traps. Um, so that actually was a statistically significant difference. Our hoop traps did a lot better than our basking traps. Um, so our CPUE is kind of a similar magnitude to a Moose and Blackwell paper um, where they actually looked at bycatch data in modified fike nets. So they actually did some trapping on Clear Lake as well. I mean, depending on the year they captured between 0 0.025 and 0 0.213 turtles per trap hour. Um, uh, Gamble in 2006 did a study in central Minnesota, so not too far away, and they found the opposite pattern that we did. So their hoop traps were less productive than their basking traps. And that pattern of higher CPUE in basking traps is, you know, has been shown in quite a few other studies. So basking traps tend to do better. And in our study, hoop traps did better. If I had to guess, I would say it's because there were so many natural basking spots in this area. Um, I'm really excited to continue this research. I, I would like to try trapping in an area that doesn't have so many um, natural basking spots and see if this pattern holds. So these population estimates, I, I want to give you a big uh, caveat here that, that take these with a grain of salt because we really need better, uh, better numbers to have a lot of confidence in these. So we calculated population estimates uh, three different ways. So usually using the Schnabel index, uh, Lincoln-Peterson model, 
um, that included the Chapman correction for small um, small sample size and then the Jolly Sieber model. Um, both the Schnabel and Lincoln Peterson models um, assume a closed population. Jolly Sieber um, assumes an open population. Uh, you can see that our uh, our results vary greatly, right? Between 27 to 269 individuals. Um, and I think the real take home from this is that we need to just uh, increase our sampling intensity. So when we looked at the data, it seems like we probably need to capture more uh, around 80 individuals to have a little more confidence. Um, looking, looking at the results of the models, probably the the Schnabel index, um, you know, is the one I have the most confidence in, but again, take that with a grain of salt. Um, the sex ratio information is actually really, really interesting. Um, most studies, you know, typically they show a mild, male bias in capture rate. Our, our data actually showed a female bias. So we captured more females overall relative uh, to males. Um, our hoop traps were pretty evenly um, distributed between males and females, um, but our basking traps uh, were pretty much, you know, uh, female biased. So we had 16 females versus nine males. Um, generally, studies attribute the male bias to seasonal differences in mate searching behavior or female biased road mortality, or even uh, an increased ability for females to to um, escape from traps, but um, again, this is one year of uh, one year of data. I'm really interested to see if this pattern holds in the future. Um, the takeaways from this, I think, um, the main things are that the differences in trap efficacy really underscore the importance of utilizing many different trap types rather than just one kind to avoid you know, potential trap bias in your population estimates. Um, it also is important to assess both the total number of, of individuals caught and I think the sex specific capture rates. Um, the study site habitat has to play a big role in this. Again, I would love to get into, uh, you know, there's a lot of kind of prairie pothole like uh, small small areas of water that don't have many um, basking spots. I would love to, to trap in those in this upcoming summer to see, um, see if this uh, basking trap, uh, you know, is more attractive in those situations. Um, and then last but not least, it's, it's probably redundant to say this to this group of people, but, um, you know, turtles are slow growing, they're uh, prone to extirpation. So understanding their po population dynamics is really crucial especially considering that changes in human habitat use is already known to change demographics of all types of turtles. So I think establishing baselines, you know, so we can evaluate anthropogenic influences mm -hmm. on turtles and other animals is really um, important. Um, our future research, so right now we are already working on the genetic analyses. Um, I hope to start the hematological studies this spring we're mainly, um, you know, the first thing we're going to be looking at is heterophil to lymphocyte ratio. Um, next season, I really want to increase our trapping effort. So I want to get at least double the number of traps out and try trapping in more diverse habitats. Um, some studies have shown trapping success correlates with um, climate or other weather factors from the previous winter, specifically precipitation. So I think in the long term, that would be really interesting. And then um, our undergraduate researcher, it really gets the credit for this. So she noticed, I don't know if you can see if it's big enough on your screens, but this turtle here has what's called reticulate melanism. So 11 of our individual turtles had that. They were all male, which is consistent with what is seen. But given that we already have DNA samples from these individuals, it would be interesting to see if there's any genetic differentiation um, among those group of individuals that show this reticulate melanism. Um, I, there's a lot of people we need to thank, but first and foremost, uh, the South Dakota Game Fish and Parks Small Grant Program funded this, and really as a new faculty member, it allowed me to get this project kind of up and running um, and in, involve undergraduates in research, which is fantastic, so I can't thank them enough. And then um, we need to thank uh, Northern State and uh, University of Minnesota Morris for all of their uh, support as well.
though I'm a fast talker, there's probably plenty of time, uh, probably plenty of time for questions if anyone has some. Yeah, we do have time, so go ahead and ask. Yeah, Amy, uh, I'm curious with regard to your basking traps, I didn't see any type of board over them that they could crawl on towards the center. So were the turtles crawling up just on the on the sides of the tubes themselves and hanging on? Yeah, I don't know. So there's a ramp here. So, you know, we often observe them sitting up around here and then they would pop in. That's a modification I'd like to make for this next year as well. Okay, so how, how much of an observation were you able to do of the turtles trying to crawl up on it? Um, I, I mean, I guess I don't have a number off the top of my head, but I mean, I definitely saw turtles, <laughs> you know, many times crawling up here and kind of sitting here, although they don't always jump into the middle then. Right. Okay. I'm um, just curious, uh, the, the natural sites that you talk about there where the turtles could bask, any chance you could take in either remove them or make them unavailable to the turtles so that they're kind of forced to, in essence, go to yours? Yes, that yep, that that's, another, uh, that's another thing on our to-do list. We'd like to set these in areas, you know, that we know they've used in the past, but remove the natural basking spots. Uh, Amy, do you see the question from Drew in the chat? I don't. Okay, do you know how the paint pens hold up year to year? And why not use notching on the carapace? Um, we were looking for a non-permanent, I would expect, right, they are going to shed that top layer of, uh, of the carapace over the winter, so we shouldn't see them year to year, so we wanted something just within the season. So I will say this is my, uh, sorry. Did you put bait inside the basking trap as well? We did, yep. My, my thought about that, that was it can't it. hurt, but you know, that it, you know, it wouldn't repel them from the traps, but it, I didn't think it would do anything to deter them from going into them. Okay, but you would think that the smell itself, they're getting that through the water and they would be underwater maybe trying to get to it and they can't get through the, met and the netting to it so it doesn't really help you catch them right potentially um I, I have read a few studies where they they bait their basking traps as well um and these where they're sold they they sell a bait tower too as a way to attract turtles you know which is just like a wire case that sits in the middle of it but Did you catch anything unusual or something you didn't expect? <laughs> um, you know, I, I don't know that I, I, I knew as a, it was going to be a possibility to catch the snapping turtle, but it, that was a big, that was a big turtle. I was surprised it fit into the hoop, into the hoop. <laughs> this was actually my first foray. So, so Heather Way is a, is a herpetologist by training, although she wasn't able to be on the ground as much as she wanted to be because of COVID this year. But this is my first foray into working with turtles. So I feel like I learned a lot this year. I have a lot of modifications for the next year. Sure. Did you have any disturbance to your traps from the public? No, <laughs> no, we didn't. Nope. Um, I don't know if, you know, they, in some cases you, you could see them uh, the closest landowners, I, you know, this, the, there was public access to this spot, but the closest land owners I talked to in advance, so there weren't issues with that. Um, I think also, given that my in-laws have a cabin there, they know the people, so people kind of knew we were doing this. So more than disturbances to this, I, I feel like people, every time they saw a turtle, felt like they needed to call me to let me know. So. That was kind of nice too. Well, thank you, Amy. That was really interesting. <laughs> <laughs>